Hello and welcome back to the Booniverse. We're back in the Booniverse and we're joined today by Super Sai. Hello. Super Hello. Sai is in the house. I'm joining you for a bit. I'm not going to play. I'm just going to sort of, uh, you know, allow you to, to take me through the world of Robin Hood's Sherwood Builders demo Sherwood version. Sherwood Builders. Uh, Sai has played a little bit of this already as well and we're going to share our thoughts on it. Uh, I'm going to start a new game. I have played it for a few hours already. Uh, it takes you through just sort of, it is a demo, so it takes you through some of the introductory stuff. So we're going to start a new game. One would say it is demonstrating. Demonstrating, yeah. exactly. <laughs> we'll be demonstrating how this game works. And I've already got some thoughts on the things that could be improved and the things that I like about it. No, I really can't go over his do. If I'm going to be honest. His hairdo. Yeah. <laughs> this is our this is our Robin Hood. This is what Robin look, Hood looks like. He's a uh, he's a very modern day Robin Hood. It's like, who, how did you get clippers to make <laughs> exactly, your hair yeah. that short? No one. No one has clippers. He he did not use. Or maybe I suppose he could have used a blade. Yeah, he could have used. I, mean, a blade. I get. I get. It's the, the the stupidest reason to time travel, isn't it? I must have nice hair. I will travel into the future. Huh? I will travel to the future to get nice hair. So the way this works is it's set up like a kind of tutorial. And so what I've done is I've turned off various things in the display settings. Um, I've turned off the compass because it's really annoying. And I've turned off the show tutorials but because we, we can always see the active tasks and we can see the markers on the map as well. It means we're taking up less real estate on the screen. Yeah, I'm, I'm always up for that, increasing the immersion and all that sort of stuff. Exactly. I want to increase the immersion. What I did look for was removing the HUD entirely so I could play like that. But there's no option for that. It is only a yeah. demo. That is dangerous in a survival game, though. It can be. Like, what things can I pick up? What does happen, though, is it has things like this. Um, they've got like a little orange outer, you. an orange mm. glow to them, so you can see what stuff you can pick up and how you interact with stuff. But we'll get to that in just a little bit. First, we've got to talk to Tuck. Uh, so what he's saying is he's given me some stuff, which I'm going to check in my inventory. Again, I've changed some of my settings. Let's just look at the settings that we've changed. So we've changed these game settings here from the originals. We turned off the compass. We turned off the tutorials. I've turned off the map slide effect because I don't even know what that is. In input settings, I have changed the inventory button because there is a hot bar, which is more frustrating than anything else. So we have this radial wheel and yeah, it's not very responsive, but what happened was as well, because it was on tab and my inventory was on I, and so I was hitting tab and accidentally taking a potion or something like that. So I've just completely re I've remapped it and I've mapped my inventory to tab instead. That sounds sensible. Yeah, so I'm, what I do is I'll move my water and my food up to here. And what Tucker's asked us to do is just eat some food and drink some water. And that's the first bit of our tutorial done and then we need to go and get some rest it's animations of it's it's almost like um like a jrpg style yeah his he, he almost looks like he's got anime movements yeah you know it, it wouldn't surprise me if he runs with his arms held backwards yeah yeah, yeah. naruto style yeah <laughs> So the bed is where we saved it and we've completed our first part of our quest so we're going to go and talk to tuck again so he's given us the blueprint for a hatchet, which is awesome. So we go into our tab and we can make a hatchet, but we, we need materials to do it. We see all these things that are glowing. We can pick all of these up. But also when we've got the hatchet in our hand, it will show glowing trees that we can cut down. But also, if you check on the map, there are various areas where certain things are. So this area over here is where, the, where you can cut down wood. Over here is where you can cut down wood. Here is where you can mine for stuff. Here is where you will find deer. Fairly simple. Yeah, super quick animations. Uh, I have to, because as, as, as you said, I have played this game a little bit, probably about, I don't know, 20 minutes, and I legitimately spent 15 minutes of that trying to work out how to cut down these trees, because it just didn't seem as if anything was happening, you know. I was hitting it for a while, and I thought, run away, and, you know, came back and hit it. I'm not sure about the animations at all. It's it that doesn't feel like you're hitting things. You remember I said to you before that it feels a bit like a port from a 
from mm, a phone, it, yeah, like yeah, a phone yeah, yeah, game yeah. port. Yeah. It, although, it, although it looks great, and when we go out into the woods, you'll be able to see properly what it looks like. But yeah, I mean, the, the graphics themselves look great, yeah. All of these animations are very much the same as if the implement that you're using, the tool that you're using, goes straight through the object that you're hitting. Which is, it is immersion breaking in a way. Um, yeah. But it's also just really difficult to, to learn the game when you can't work out what you're doing. And this breaches the, the, the other subject of, is, is this going to be a final version of the game? Um, because it says a demo, and yet it probably looks to me more like an alpha. Yes, like there seems to be like there could be much more added to oh, this. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't, yeah. I don't know whether it would just be the fact that there's more storyline or more map. Like I say, I have played it for a few hours, so we'll hopefully get to the point. I'll take you through to the point where I've played up to, just going through, making all the things that I need to make, getting off, because it is a builder. It's a town building game as well. Sort of a survival um, that's game. That's what piques my interest. You know, you know, I'm like we're building. You know, um, I, I, I mean, the only problem is you can't, I can't dig underground caverns and stuff. You can't dig know. underground caverns. <laughs> we can't make huge caves. But yeah, uh, yeah. But you know, the, the the um, I like the concept of having the almost you know like a city builder and a first person survival game. I like that. Yeah. So we're going to go and gather meat. So this is where we get on to the hunting aspect of the game. And so we come out. It's very politically correct, isn't it? Gather meat. Gather meat. Yeah. Well, there's <laughs> just meat lying around in the woods, and we need to go and gather it. Okay, so we've run across our first camp, which we completely ran into by accident. Uh, so I was going to go and hunt some some deer, but now we're going to have to hunt oh, some dudes. That, oh, no, it's okay. I've not, I haven't actually got to this point yet. Oh, yeah. that went straight through a shield. That's interesting. It didn't go through a shield. I've managed to get to a point where I'm able to find a sweet spot. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, sweet yeah, yeah. Spot. That was nice, that little bit above his shield there. Yeah, I like it. Have you not got any... Can you not use your hatch here? It's a melee weapon. I... Can, but I'm not very good with it. He's dead. Oh, good shots. So this gives me a good opportunity to talk about this view. When we've got an axe or a sword or a pickaxe or any other tool in our hand, we can see a lot to the sides. But when we go into this view, we zoom in, which is kind of okay if it wasn't for the fact that we had another zoom if we right click. Yeah, if there was a if there was a button to do that. You know, like if you if you aimed in and it did that, and then you could zoom even further, then great. But I, I found you, you're always changing from from like an axe or, or or a knife or whatever into the bow because you can't keep the bow up because of this view. And if you if you creep, because in this game you can creep. If you creep, it's even less. It's even worse. You can see hardly anything. So it takes up about a quarter of the screen, and when you're zoomed in, it takes up about a third of the screen. And I understand with the zoom in, if you're taking up a third of the screen, that's fine. But taking up a you know a quarter of the screen while you're trying to hunt for deer is a nightmare, and I don't like it. That's one of my main issues with this game. But yeah, I mean, they, they, I mean, I don't know how they've done it. Maybe we're missing a treat. Maybe they're trying to make it more immersive and realistic by not giving you the view. Because if you're creeping in reeds, then obviously you're not going to be able to see very much, are you? Even if they changed, even if they had this much zoom, but they had you in the middle of the screen and maybe slightly higher above your head or something, so it didn't, it wasn't just your whole body getting in the way. That would be understandable. Or maybe just make the zoom into first person because I guess what's that's what they're trying to do. They're trying yeah, to give that was you the as other much thing I thought. as first person. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you never know. I mean, maybe when we get a bit further into the game, learn more of the mechanics, this will make sense a little bit more. Yeah, maybe so. So if we check on our map, we can see that we're sort of near Doe's Crossing. It's actually telling us that there should be good game for hunting here. So we've gone a little bit too far out. Also, there's these resting areas, which is quite good because as you get further out into the map, they are the only place where you can save. So if you listen out for the owls. Hi, Mr. Oh, yeah. Owl. The other thing I haven't figured out with this game is whether there is a day-night cycle. So let's just test that. Mm. 
So now that we're back at the village, we can put this meat that we've just collected into storage. And that's that completed. And then we're going to talk to Tuck and see what he has to say. So now Tuck has asked us to build a furnace in our village. So we just need to collect all of the materials to be able to make it. So we're going to go off and do that. Salutations. There's some funny voice acting in this game. <laughs> You'll probably find it's like two guys and they just put on loads of voices. Yeah, all right. Salutations. I hope so. I hope that's the case. <laughs> Where's your, uh, your food marker? There doesn't seem to be any food marker anymore. So the food meter is down the bottom. The water one is the blue one. and then the, Oh, yeah, that's what I meant, the water the red one. The red one. The water is, one seems to be disappeared. They disappear when they're full, um, the food meter and the water meter. Uh, I definitely need more stone and I need more wood. So I can cut down more trees. And I can collect stone from around and about the place. But also, I can buy things from the trader. This is a trader over here. Uh, I don't know if he's got any stone on him. He doesn't. He usually deals in more important things. Yeah, so we've got everything we need now to build the furnace. So we're going to jump into our manage your village section. Uh, at this point, we can build a furnace, but there's not really enough room. So we do have to pull down the trees. Now, any work we do to our village requires food. So it will use food to cut down this tree. So hopefully we'll still have enough food left to build. But still, I think those trees are still in the way. I'm going to build it right up against the edge to leave us plenty of room behind. So now our villagers will start building this for us at maximum speed. Get to it. In the meantime, we're going to drink some mead to put our health up a little bit because we have lost a bit of health in that. <laughs> I'm right in front of the villagers. Yeah. I even make my furnace while I drink my mead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to relax and watch you work. Let's go and talk to Tuck. So he's given us a pickaxe, but he's also given us the blueprint for a pickaxe, which means we can go and do things like collecting metal. So now we're going to head over to where these rocks are marked on the map, like I mentioned earlier. We're going to go and get ourselves some iron. Some iron. 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 Do, 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 do. So here's our mine. Now these should only take a few hits. And you sort of have to hit them in a fairly specific place as well. We just need to collect as much stone and as much iron from here as possible. And then we're going to go back to our furnace. So one of the things I'm yet to show you is the skill tree. So we've been leveling up for doing various things, which means we've got 12 skill points available here in our skill tree. And I think I'm going to go down the mining route as that's what we're doing at the moment. So we can get a bit more max weight, better mining damage multiplier. And let's head towards these. But also I think I want to take a couple of health ones just in case we run into any fools later on. Okay, so Tuck has asked us to collect a bunch of materials so that we can make a blacksmith. That does include food as well, but it includes iron ingots, so we need to go and smelt down some iron ingots first. Well, it didn't take long to build that, did they? No, that's pretty quick. What I do need to do is I need to grab some wood because I don't have any wood on me at the moment. We need to... I love how you bake bread in the same place you make iron ingots. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yes. So I always bake my bread in the same place that I make my iron. <laughs> Don't you? Just in an oven. In my Just, iron I, oven. I bake my, yeah, I bake my, uh, uh, my, bake my bread at 500 degrees. <laughs> so, okay, so we've got 14 iron. That's fine. Let's just dump as many of our materials into 
our village storage as we can. I mean, it didn't take long to build, so I suppose that's not too bad. Yeah, I mean, the balance isn't too bad on that sort of stuff. So we still need lots more wood and we still need a bit of food. Uh, so that's that in terms of the materials to build a blacksmith. So now we can go back into our village management. Again, I don't want to run out of food. I'm a little bit concerned that if I cut these trees down, I'm going to run out of food. Yeah, we needed more food. I should have killed some more deer. We're going to get a blacksmith in next time and then we can see what fine wares he has to offer. Thanks for joining me, Si. No problem. Thank you for inviting me. We'll have another look at this next week and we'll come back to it. So join us back in the Booniverse then. Until then, take it easy. <laughs>